can you, uh, what, what questions do you have about our sweet server on a chip here? So basically, um, and I'm doing a lot of Arch64 support and stuff, and awesome. I've been working in simulators which are massively slow, yep. so I'm actually kind of excited to see some real hardware. Yes, sir. It's, yes, it's right sir. here. Yes. Our real hardware is I've right never actually here. seen it. I've just <laughs> heard about it. But Can we open this? Inside, right here. Can you we open? open it up? Like my yeah, head. absolutely. You can't say it. You've got to do HTTP <laughs> colon yeah. forward forward slash. Can we, uh, can we do... Yeah. You're going you have a... <laughs> so what are you doing uh, right now? That's the biggest difference. What are you doing here? So he's actually signing up to be a, a recipient of one of our development boards. We're actually going to contact him shortly to figure out exactly what applications he needs this for and uh, actually get him signed up to ship him a board. It's going to ship Q1 So right 2014. here. Do you mind if I touch it? Please, go yeah? ahead. Just so right here, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> so can, can you check it out? What, what, can, you, yeah. can you open and see what, what's on it? So my main goal is, of course, making sure that the GNU C compiler and C++ compilers actually run on this board stably and efficiently. Ooh. What do you see there? What's there? Oh, I'm just having getting off playing with hardware. <laughs> so what's going on? What, what's, uh, what's on here? Uh, just, uh... So this is our 64-bit uh, ARM version 8 server on a chip. You can see that there's no other co-processors, no other, uh, no other Ethernet chips on here. It's all on our lots of chip. I, lots You've of got, I.O. Uh, USB 3, SATA Gen 3, uh, PCI Express version 8. Uh, it's got all the doodads. So with this, what would you be able to do? So basically, when I'm testing my compiler, I have to use software simulation, which takes days and days and days and days to run. So something like this actually lets me make sure that my 64-bit ARM support on my compiler actually runs really, really well by basically decreasing our cycle time for debugging and development. So you are doing stuff for 64-bit in general, or specifically for this ARM. solution? Just open it up. Is it specifically just... So I work on this? all yeah. ARM chip variants on the compiler side, and this is, of course, our latest development. Most of my team is working very hard on 64-bit ARM support and stuff, but our inability to test it on fast hardware has been a real bottleneck. So it's connected right here and there? So this website right now is running on this server. On this single me, server right this there? This single server. Just want to open it better or a bunch of that's it. So is it fragile or what? No, I'm just being very careful with a running, actually live server. There you go. <laughs> so uh, you need a fan? Well, a small one. You can see that this is just a standard small uh, server fan, a server CPU fan. But you can see that we don't have a dirty, great, big, loud server fan like you would have in a data center. This chip right here uses only 50% of the power and puts out only 50% of the heat that a similar performance Xeon board would. Uh, so is this uh, sign up? People can get it in Q1 2014. That's right. Sign up on our website. And how about uh, myxgene.apm.com? And what's the plan? The release, full release. Like so, a... so that is uh, forward-looking that you will get when you go under NDA. NDA, okay. Absolutely. Right. Right. Do you mind? I already got the email. <laughs> Awesome! Yeah. You mind that? Let's go over the there. It's live. Huh? So your, your chip is over there at Dell and at HP, right? That's right. Why don't you guys head on over there and take a look? Okay, let's go check it out. Would you mind that come with me? Yeah, yeah let me see each other. Cool. So I still want yes. Uh, this is a 3.8 kernel. Uh, it was, uh, this was uh, something that uh, John or Fedora is usually just two digits, like 18, 19. I'm just yeah. switching Fedora. <laughs> Oh, this is Fedora 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or support 19. Yeah, yeah. This is this, yeah. This is running Fedora 19. Um, we got uh, this was a, a huge step for us in in terms of usability for the system. It brought in tools like Yum and uh, you know NFS. It, it got we we advanced quite a bit with. Uh, with being able to, to pull um, Fedora in. You know, we got some X Windows, maybe. No, that's 
So you're running this just as a storage app uh, on the uh, ARM board? Yeah. Correct. Right now it's storage feeding the data to your yeah, to a, to a workstation, right. That's that's exactly what we're doing. It's, uh, it's there? Yeah, it's, it's in here. It's a... Um, uh, it's a single chip from APM. Uh, it's got a, a PMC Sierra uh, HBA, just a commodity PCIe. Yep, yep. And uh, or this is... Well, we're doing, we're doing SAS, but it's... Yeah. Um, uh, and we're externally connected to the JBot here, so we've got um, you know, we've got a few things a few things in play here. So what are you actually uh, tracking as far as CPU utilization up here? Uh, just the CPU. So, so, so we can shift this. In a, so if they're serving up data to a single video lab here, yeah, you can get to it. Is there anything else you can do that demonstrates you know, the capabilities of all those cores? I can um, I can I could do a I could run some FIO or something like that um, if you uh, just doing yeah. yeah. capabilities you might have. Are you uh, thought I had read too? I yeah, it was going to be a demo of uh, Red Hat helping to uh, demo something, and I thought it was in the down for this right now. So yeah, we're virtualization technology. No, not not uh, that wasn't that wasn't us, but um, but yeah, I mean you, you see, uh, start banging on the disks and uh, and so you have corresponding CPU for that. So how soon? This is a um, uh, this is something that we're gonna work with APM on a. Uh, uh, on a, a proof of concept for probably late 2013, early 2014, uh, for some of our key customers uh, before we uh, we would go into any production. There's um, there's other there's a, yeah there's other use cases. We've done some uh, we've done some 32-bit ARM stuff for front-end web servers. Uh, with some customers in uh, in Europe, uh, I, I'm I'm sure that will come along with it. Uh, we've also uh, we've also thought about uh, Hadoop and some other uh, some other workloads like that. Uh, again, again, this needs more maturity, um, more uh, more tools. Uh, the the uh, Oracle JDK uh, things like that still have to. Uh, Oh, you know, okay. still have to come over to the, to the platform. What, uh, what do your customers say about the 32-bit work uh, stuff they saw? I mean, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Do you see a lot of interest from uh, customers out there in uh, foreign stuff? There, there is interest. Uh, I, uh, you know, I think everybody is interested in how to conserve energy, right, in their, in their data centers. So, uh, but, you know, it's, How many uh, people do you have working on this solution? Is that secret? Uh, uh, I, I, right now, in our in our uh, uh, DCS or data center solutions, there's a there's a couple of engineers, a few engineers that are working with uh, APM uh, and and some of the other uh, uh, some of the other partners on uh, on on getting this going. How big do you think it could it could be? I'm not sure. Not sure. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Well, how much work did the Dell engineers have to do? Did you just take the Fedora kernel, load it, and everything worked fine, all the SAS code was there? Did that PMC write some special driver modules? Uh, so, so we, um, uh, we worked uh, with APM on... Uh, APM had, had a first go at, the, uh, at compiling the... Uh, APM and PMC had a first go at compiling a, uh, an Arch64 driver. Uh, we took that. Uh, we took that work and then turned that into kernel modules that could be loaded into Fedora. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's where that's where we are, right? Uh, how many distros are supporting the R64, two, etc. 
I mean, you look at that list, it's fairly substantial, but it only says they bootstrap. It doesn't really say they've run much with respect to workloads, and I know it's yeah. a lot of simulation right now, right. but still, you know, if there is a piece of silicon out there, they can so I think they have a lot of running. Yeah, I, I, I think um, uh, I think you'll see. Uh, there's still other there's still other tools. That, yeah, like I said, the, the Oracle would be. Um, uh, Oracle would be great. OpenJDK has been ported, um, but it, it still needs some tuning before it's uh, it's good. And, and I, I believe the Hadoop guys uh, uh, look for the Oracle JDK anyway. Do you know what version of uh, GCC you guys grab with the Fedora 19 kernel there? I don't. Okay, because I, I loaded a Fedora kernel on an Arndale board and it came without a Fortran compiler and I was wanting a Fortran compiler. Yeah. So I had to back off. So. I think no. He's doing the GCC okay. or something. Okay. All right. So I was just Thanks. curious. Okay, so Thanks. There seems to be some confusion about yeah. you know, so are you guys adding like no, this Check out the HP area. Also doing uh, 64 bit servers. Just gonna look over here. Right here. If you have to do video, can I do video? Yeah, so I video? Planes right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Over time. Exactly. That was the expression. Wow. That, that was your role. Is going to need that. I'm a product manager, so I, I actually, I'm actually responsible for some of the brand new ARM-based. Yeah. We're running more on bare metal as opposed to doing virtualization. The idea is that uh, when you do an overpower CPU, you have to slice it up with virtualization. So they just go to Yeah, as opposed to doing that and have the associated costs with some of that complexity. We have where you can run a bare metal more efficiently. It's the right size. Right? So everything about these cartridges is right size. The CPUs are right size, the number of cores are right size, the number of SOCs are right size, network and I.O. for storage, it's all right size. And that way you don't spend a lot of extra money on a box that you don't need. You don't need extra riser cards, you don't need extra PCB space, you don't need extra power and cooling, everything is right sized in our box. This is the first time you show these? Uh, we've shown them before at other other conventions. So uh, you ship all the solutions, kind of? Like all the solutions for ARM, uh, ARM part servers? Uh, no, uh, I mean like also the AMD would be We ship Intel, AMD and ARM. All right. Everything that's low uh, the power. The AMD ARM. Uh, and AMD ARM when they come out. All right. So our, our idea, right, is to take the best of breed, whatever whatever ARM CPUs have the best peripherals and make the most sense for different workloads, we can build a cartridge around that really quickly. How many of those are there in here? You can fit 45. 45. We'll start with the basic overview. So, um, HP has developed the concept around open architecture and software defined servers. So, um, the idea is instead of having generic to you servers that are more than you really need, mm -hmm. you can have a uh, specific cartridge designed for the specific software workload you're trying to run. Uh, uh, so, being at ARM today, we're showing ARM based. Uh, cartridges. We've got four or five that mm -hmm. we're showing. Uh, it's a, because it's an open architecture. We're going to partner with any SOC developer that wants to come and create a cartridge with us. Oh, okay. Um, so we're providing the the framework of the system. It has multiple fabrics running inside the box. What runs on those fabrics is defined by this cartridge and what uh, it wants to do yes. with those fabrics. Got it. So we've got um, a fabric that will bring every cartridge up to an Ethernet switch um, out to Ethernet out the back. Okay. There's other fabrics that just go north south. Other fabrics that go east west. There's a 2D torus fabric if you've got cartridges that just want to talk to every other cartridge. Right system uh, and etc. And then uh, here we have the applied micro arm base. So you have one node. Then here you have a Texas Instruments that is four nodes. So that's four individual servers. Right? So on a one node model you get 45 and then on a, the four node model you get 180 um, per chassis. You have two network switches in here. So um, obviously with, with the uh, the four node you would have 45 by one gig today. So with the, the four node you would have 180 right, ports. So each one of the cards has dual connectivity out uh, to the, uh, the network. I think it's this moonshot. Yeah, this is moonshot. Uh, you guys are with AMD. We have a, a cartridge with uh, with AMD as well, right? AMD arms. 
it's no, it's AMD X86. Not yet. So. Yeah. It fits in the same X86. It's the same, same, same chassis. They're all interchangeable. So and much, you can mix uh, them up. How much power does this yeah, well, use? Um, with the well, about anywhere between about 900 watts to about uh, 1500 watts, depending on what cartridges you're using. Right. Uh, how much <laughs> people are working on. Yeah. So I mean, if you look at like this cartridge here, I believe this one here is about 50 watts per cartridge. Right. So that's uh, what 12 watts per actual server. Uh, then you also have the integrated switches. You have some management modules in the back. Uh, uh, ultra low power though. So looks a little bit better now than it did like four or five years ago. Oh, well, it's a completely different chassis, right? You were you're thinking Redstone, uh, which is where you just had the, uh, the the cards that sat in. Yeah. Um, they chose this model here because it gives it a little bit more flexibility in, in terms of. Yeah. yeah. No, it's uh, front to rear, so it sucks it out. Oh, this, is, yeah. this is the front. Says, I'm, exactly. web, yeah. I'm web serving. You go, well, sucks it out, pulls it through here. There's I'm a couple bass holes on the bottom as well. Right. Yeah. 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 And then uh, on that baseboard, there's a couple of holes that'll go ahead and pull the air up in various places. Right. Well, I'm loving it. Yeah, I saw it. And, and I don't think it was that. HP, but yeah, I saw some that's early that's design and yeah, had like four crossbacks. Yeah, no, was. But it was funnel over to this side, and here you have the power, and the air just hit the wall there. Yeah. There was no it didn't direct it where I should go and out again. Well, when did you I'd see like that? Stay in tune with what the developer oh, okay. So I about think, I think actually there's some sort of a I'm not hundred percent sure. I think it was a sun. Well, it, it could have been because they so came out with their uh, it was the smart device. Yeah. Channel I can but uh, like like the direction for doing it here it was just like some IMT. Here. Oh yeah, yeah. No. Did you design this? No, I didn't design it. I, I just huh? help, help educate people on, on what it is and how we can actually use it. So, uh, um, okay. it fully configured. It, it depends on the cartridge. Um, oh, well, okay. So we, 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 do we try to package it right. fully populated with one type oh, okay. of cartridge, right. right? And so depending yes. on what car cartridge you're looking at, you, you might have uh, forty-five thousand dollars per chassis, upwards of maybe one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars per chassis, depending if I go with the one node versus the four node. Uh, you know, um, uh, like Texas Instruments, they had the DSP cores built into that, right? Obviously, that's a higher value product than just uh, the standard, you know, like a uh, Texas is One processor? The, yeah, this is the applied micro. Uh, this is four processors. This is four. Well, see, one server, four servers. That's probably the easier way to look at it, right? And bio informatics. And is this how you hook it up? So I'm more of an end user. No, those are just the push downs, right? Because this is I'm the actual SOC. Um, right? And that's how they, we actually push it down and attach the, the sink to the board. Right? So that doesn't actually come off. It just you know, helps dissipate the gear of the heat. How, how does the price compare to other solutions? Like previous technology? Well, um, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> um, uh, on a per server basis, you're probably a maybe about two thirds the cost of it if you do a server by server, right? But you also need to factor in what's the power cost, what's the density cost, and then also what's your compute cost, right? So on most of these, if you compare that to a low end server, you're getting anywhere between a four to one and a two to one ratio in terms of compute, right? Uh, some of the, the newer x86 stuff, we're seeing that uh, compared to some of the lower end, we're about 90% as powerful. Um, is, is some of a, a standard well, server. You do one socket by one socket, but then you start to factor in the fact that I can put 45 and 4U where, you know, they'll take an entire rack of the same servers. So you really have to uh, balance in. So what is the calculation? Uh, is it, uh, do you say, is it fourth the cost? No, what, what do you no, say? No, no, no. It, uh, of, uh, some of them. No, there, there's no actual calculation. <laughs> Um, you when you said 90% is powerful, uh, did you say on the low end, on the Calzada side? Or? No, 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 no. On, on some of our well, cartridges, primarily uh, the x86 stuff, maybe, maybe, maybe oh, if you compare that to some of the uh, so traditional lower end uh, x86 procs that a lot of these scale out guys are using, so you mean more like the Abitin Centerton type boxes, so like 90% is powerful on the Xeons? Um, like an E3? Yeah, the Abitin. Yes, like a lower end E3 compared to like an Abitin, right? Which is um, what cloud computers, uh, cloud computing companies would do? Some of them. <laughs> it yeah. depends, right? They're, they're, it, every different company has their own architecture set in mind. Um, there are some that, that want to have be able to parallelize and scale out their application, and that's where something like Moonshot and, and ARM-based servers really come in handy, right? 
other companies rather have dual proc with a lot of memory, and that's not where Moonshot's going to fit. This is a big deal, no? Yeah, it's a big deal because you're saving pace. You're, I mean, you can get 450 you know, compute servers into a single rack, right? Or if I go with the four node, I can get 1,800 how, how servers. Uh, you have your own how, yeah, how many? You have 40, 40, 45, 45. Per, cartridges. <laughs> So if I do a single yeah, node, yep, that gives me 180 if I do the four node. And then we're also looking at a 47U rack, right, to make this as dense as possible, not the standard 42 rack. So. How soon is it ready? It's ready now. It's we're ready now, but only in small volume tests? No. The, you can get the x86 now. Uh, the ARM uh, for Texas Instruments will be coming out here in the middle of November. And then you're going to see Applied Micro and, and Calzada coming out in January. So. Is the ARM is a Cortex... What is it? Oh, for Texas Instruments, it's a yeah. Cortex A15. A15 together yeah. with a bunch of DSPs to do specific... Well, Stuff. Yeah, that, that's what Texas Instruments actually provided and we integrated. Okay. Right. The, the applied micro, what, what version of that chip is that? I don't have that one off the hand. I think that's actually the newer one. Yeah, so it should be the 64 bit, and then you're going to have 64 gigs of RAM as well. Is this prototype then? This, this one, yeah, this one is not actually a, a production ready yet. This is the TI box? Yeah. Cartridge? The Just click under that one. Oh. Question for you. So if, if part of like the big advantage of like getting all these cores, small cores together, and you tie them together with like a fabric, so you have more efficient networking, etc., across the cores, why do you still have to have these Mellanox switches going across the box? Melanox switches. Yeah. We don't have Melanox switches. What's a, uh, well, I guess earlier I was talking to Th These are just air baffles. What are these? These are There's standard the, Ethernet switches. Yeah, so this yeah but it's Melanox, right? No. Okay, so I was... It's HP. So where, where, I mean, uh, okay. What's I guess the earlier I was talking to somebody and they said that the AMCC box, when you use the AMCC, they needed to use Melanox 10, 10 gig E rather than just the Ethernet that's native to the die. Uh, on the 10 gig, uh, 10 gig cards that are coming out, yeah, which we haven't released those yet, those may have a Melanox NIC on the actual board. Right? I'm, I'm, I don't know which ones those are or what model they're actually using. Oh, okay. I heard there's actually like four fabrics going on. Yeah, networking fabric, storage mm -hmm. fabric. So if you look inside, right, you just you fabric. just have a bunch of PCI yeah. slots. Yeah, and then between those PCI yeah. slots, we have uh, electrical traces, which we, you know, we call fabrics. Right? Everyone calls it a fabric. It's not mine. Okay. First and easy fabric, right, is is your Ethernet, right? Yeah. So each one of these cartridges has been pre-wired with eight by ten gig links. So I have four ten gig links going to Fab A, four ten gig links going to Fab B. So if I have a single node cartridge, I could take advantage of all eight of those. Most likely, we're just going to take advantage of two uh, for cost. But on the four node, each one of those nodes will be pre wired up for dual 10 gig connectivity, right? So you have full redundancy uh, around the board. Um, also built into the, fa uh, the fabric, so you have a storage fabric or, or SAS lanes. Um, so if I have a, a cartridge here that doesn't have room for storage, I can take a storage only cartridge, put it here, and then Moonshot will be able to go ahead and associate that storage via SAS or, or another yeah. low level protocol, right? Um, over across that I've been working on the cartridge with them for a while. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I remember back in July, I think the official. They yeah. announced probably the Thunder okay. chip. Hey, do you mind if I uh, interview, uh, film while you ask him something about this? So, what's going on there? This is the, the APM demo right here. This shows their LAMP stack running on top of their APM storm processor at 8 cores, 2.4 gig. Uh, showing top just to show that different processes are running. It's running some benchmarks in the background. And this shows our ILO chassis manager being uh, managing the cartridge. So you can actually go into the serial port, you can power it on and off, you can manage it the same way you do all the rest of the servers in the, in the chassis. Is this uh, final? How much work final. do you have to do? Uh, we currently ship cartridges today. We currently ship that chassis, the chassis manager, um, but the current shipping cartridges are Intel Atom. So as we launch new and more cartridges, we'll add more features to the chassis manager. We'll add more features to cartridges. We'll add more supported cartridges. And so we are currently shipping and looking to ship much more. And people can mix up the, the cartridges they want? There's nothing that prohibits you from doing that. HP really believes in selling a product that we you know, can fully stand behind, so we do a lot of testing. 
in order to test all these different cartridges we have come out, imagine the permutations of testing all these different cartridges in all these different slots. When you support 45 slots, it's just ridiculous. We can't really say, hey, we support for sure that this cartridge works 100% beside this cartridge. But there's nothing that prohibits that. There's nothing electrically that should stop that or cause that to misperform or malfunction. What's going to happen in the future? More and more ARM cartridges with more innovation. Excited about that. More Intel and AMD cartridges as well. And uh, your designs can uh, be upgraded too? Or is it perfect now? The chassis? Yeah. Uh, we really like the chassis. We spent a lot of time figuring out the optimal density. We'll look at whatever the industry requires because we are a company that sells to our customers. So as they want, if they want something different, we'll start to build something different. But with all of our kind of experience and servers in the past, this made the most sense at the time.